Hi everyone, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, we're going to talk about the phases of the cell cycle and compare the processes of mitosis and meiosis to one another. When we talk about the cell cycle, we're discussing everything that happens in the lifetime of a single cell. There are two parts to a cell's lifetime. The first part is called interphase, and the second part is called the mitotic phase, or the M phase. Interphase is much longer, and interphase is when a cell is going to be growing, doing its normal jobs, all of those kinds of things. The mitotic phase is when we do mitosis, or when a cell is going to go from being one cell into another cell. So the process of interphase, as we can see from our pie chart over here, includes everything in green. It's at least three quarters, probably even more than that of a typical cell's lifespan. So if we're gonna spend so much time in interphase, we actually have three separate parts that are occurring during this process. The first part is called the G1 phase or the G1 portion. During G1, think of this as a cell has just been born and it needs to grow up it needs to build its proteins just like you build your bones as you're growing. G1 is the very first phase of the cell cycle and the first part of interphase. When a cell gets large enough, it then transitions to the S phase. And during the S phase, it copies its DNA or it does DNA synthesis, hence the letter S. Once its DNA has been copied, the cell will then enter the G2 phase. During G2, it's going to grow even more, but what's perhaps most important about the G2 phase is the fact that this is when our organelles start to be divided. When we know that we're going to be entering mitosis shortly, we start to divide things up into two equal parts. Because remember, at the end of mitosis, we went from having one cell to two completely functional cells that each need their own organelles. Here's a little wink wink, nudge nudge. What happens in each of these stases, stages of interface is something that you do wanna make sure you know. So we wanna know for sure that the G1 phase is the beginning of a cell's life cycle. They're growing and building what they need. The DNA synthesis stage, copying our, our genetic information in the S phase, and splitting up those organelles, growing a lot more, that happens in that G2 phase. Once we've done some checks uh, to ensure that we have a correctly copied DNA, we have our organelles divided, then we'll enter what's called the mitotic phase or the M phase. During the mitotic phase, two things happen. Thing number one is mitosis. And the process of mitosis, let's underline highlight star, is all about the DNA. So the four stages of mitosis, as we'll briefly review, the only thing that they're concerned with is what's happening with the genetic information. We don't just divide the genetic information of the cell though, we do also divide its cytoplasm. And remember that the cytoplasm is the soupy cytosol as well as the organelles. So while we're dividing our genetic information, while we're doing mitosis, we also start to do this process called cytokinesis. In cytokinesis, we divide up the cytoplasm. Ultimately, at the end of this M phase, where we divide up the DNA, as well as the soupy stuff in the organelles, we've now made two new cells that are entering the G1 phase. So it's a circle of life, if you will. We start with growing, we copy our genetic information, we grow a little bit more, then we divide the genetic information and divide up the soup to make new cells. When you take the quiz and the exam, please know that for anatomy and physiology in lecture, we're not going to ask you to know exactly what happens in each of the phases of mitosis. You've studied this in other classes, so we're not going to ask you, which phase do we condense our chromosomes? Which phase do we have the metaphase plate? I'm not gonna ask you those things, but I do need you to have a general idea of what happens in this process. So in the process of mitosis, we have to take our genetic material that's normally very loose in a form called chromatin, 
and we have to turn it into something that's very compacted called chromosomes. So at the very beginning of the M phase, the first part of that mitotic phase, we build chromosomes, which are the compact X-shaped form of DNA. Once we've built the chromosomes, now we're going to have to get them to the middle of our cell so that we can equally divide them. To do that, we have to get rid of our nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. Once I get rid of that, my mitotic spindle proteins will pull those chromosomes to the center of the cell, but keep pulling even when they're there. This extra pulling causes the chromosomes to split in half which equally divides them into the two new cells that are forming. And once I form these two new cells, I then do that extra process called cytokinesis. Remember that cytokinesis is when we close off the two cells from each other, their cytoplasm is divided. So often the very end of mitosis happens at the same time as the process of cytokinesis. We finally finish dividing the genetic information at the same time as we divide that soup. So again, let me emphasize, you don't need to know exactly what happens in each phase, but you do need to know things like, I've got to condense my genetic information. I've got to divide it in half. I have to split up my soupy stuff. If you know those things, you're in good shape. We also need to be able to compare and contrast the process of mitosis, which we just talked about, with the process of meiosis, which we see here on the right. When we talk about how meiosis works, imagine doing the process of mitosis twice. So all of those dividing steps actually happen two times when we're talking about cells called sex cells. So the cells that are going to make our gametes, making our eggs or our sperm, those will do meiosis to divide. Whereas what we just talked about was mitosis. Mitosis is what your, cells go your body is going to use to create more cells, to make a bigger version of you, to heal yourself after you uh, get a cut, for example. All of those things happen with mitosis, but when we talk about reproduction, the cells that do reproduction are actually using the process called meiosis to do that. You have an excellent Venn diagram in your notes that compares the process of mitosis to the process of meiosis. I'll briefly review this with you and mention that this is something we absolutely must know for the quiz and for the exam. So when I talk about mitosis, Mitosis occurs in four stages. So we talked about those four stages. If I do them twice, now I'm doing meiosis. So eight stages in meiosis where there are only four stages during mitosis. We do mitosis in almost all the cells in your body. So the cells of your body, we call them somatic cells. Whereas our germ cells or our sex cells are the only place in the body where we would use the process of meiosis. We proliferate our cells or we make copies of our cells in mitosis, whereas meiosis is used for sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, as we see at the very bottom, increases the genetic variability in offspring compared to their parents. This is why we do the process of my meiosis to increase that variability. Whereas when we're talking about mitosis, there's no change. So the cells begin and end with the same number of chromosomes. Those chromosomes should have been copied perfectly. There should not be more variation. Whereas in meiosis, by the end of that process, we end up with less genetic information that we started with. We end up with what's called a haploid cell, and there are four of those haploid cells. Compared to mitosis, we only generate two cells, but the cells that we generate are called diploid, meaning they have all the genetic information that they need. Those are the primary differences between mitosis and meiosis, but notice when we look here at how they're the same, both of these are processes that make new cells. Meiosis makes more, mitosis makes less, they both follow those same processes of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But in meiosis, we do those, each of those phases twice. 
And finally, both processes always start with one cell. That cell will divide and will become other cells that will either use for sexual reproduction or will use to grow or repair your body. That's it for chapter three. Good luck with your studying and good luck with the quiz.